Today, we're gonna to talk about a little spin on a topic that we speak about a lot, and that is blade baits. Now, today, we're gonna to talk about blade bait strategies for shallow water. Jeff and I released last week a deep water, you know, power fishing strategy type video. Today, we're gonna to flip it kind of on its head. We're gonna talk about a technique that's designed for deep water, and most guys pigeonhole this as a deep water presentation, but it's incredibly effective in shallow water and from shore as well. So if you guys are ready to dive into shallow water blade baits, let's go. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just wanna elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. All right, guys, welcome back. I am Ben with The Hookup Tackle, AKA The Tackle Otaku on Instagram. We are The Hookup Tackle USA. Of course, I am being joined by my buddy, Jeffrey the King. What's up, Jeffrey the King? Shallow water blade baits. Yes. Never heard of. So here's the thing. There are so many techniques that get pigeonholed to seasons, times of year, depths, right? And I would say nothing in this store is more pigeonholed than a blade bait. It's, it's almost like clockwork that you see it happen, right? We come out of summer, we get into fall, and we're all having this great time catching them on top water and you know swim baits and all this great stuff. And all of a sudden it just goes from like being great to sucking. And then it's like inevitably, as soon as the suck starts, it's like, all right, guys are gonna start buying blade baits and sure as shit, the blade bait phenomenon happens. And it lasts for like 90 days, right? When it's cold and, and for good reason, right? And I'm not trying to make light of it, blade baits are incredible, right? And for the reason that these are so effective during that time of the year when we kind of get into those winter months is because when the bait gets cold and the shad start dying as that water temp drops, you know, a shad is gonna kind of move and it's gonna kind of like, kind of fall, right? And it's gonna kind of try to kick and it's gonna kind of fall. And a blade bait is just a, an incredibly effective way for imitating that. You can put it in the bottom, you can kind of rip it up, and it has that same kind of vibration and then that fall down, that vibration and that fall down. You can fish it at all kinds of different depths. You can cast it and work it like a yo-yo. You can see fish on your graph, you can drop it straight down and vertically fish it like a spoon. It's just, it's a great tool for deep water. But over the last couple of years, there has been a trend from manufacturers in making lighter and shallower running blade baits, and more and more anglers are incorporating it into their shallow water arsenal. Look, we don't all have the advantage of being able to jump on a bass boat with great electronics in January and going and finding a school of fish in 50 feet of water, right? Some of us fish from ponds or from a river or, you know, big lake, but from the shore or from a kayak, or, you know, maybe we are fishing from a fancy boat, but the fish are moving shallow. And once they move shallow, we just kind of write this off. Like we had been fishing it for, you know, the winter months and oh, they're shallow now. We're done with blade baits. But there's a way to always extend baits further into a season. Sometimes it can give you an edge that a lot of guys aren't talking about or a lot of guys aren't using. So today we're just going to kind of dissect it. We're going to talk about some of the baits that maybe you could add into your arsenal, how we're fishing them, why it can be effective, and maybe it can give you another tool in your tool chest to utilize next time you guys are fishing. So let's let's start off really quick. And you know, for me, the easiest way to talk about a blade bait is to compare it to a lipless. And I think this is a pretty common comparison, right? Like a blade bait is kind of half spoon and half lipless, right? So you can use a blade bait and you can work it like a jig and kind of vertically fish it up and down. 
you can cast it and wind it and it's going to come in with a very tight vibration the same way that a lipless would, right? Now, something happens in our you know, minds that when it's really cold, we do this. And as the water starts to warm and the fish move up, we do this. And you know, yeah, you can fish a lipless a little more aggressively. It's obviously got a lot more sound, right? So sometimes, especially in pre-spawn when those fish are pulling up, they're attracted to the sound. The sound could be one more thing that could maybe trigger them. But sometimes it could go the opposite way. And Jeff, you and I talk about this a lot, that especially when you're fishing for the biggest fish in the area, right? The kind of apex fish of that area. And, and that's gonna be relative, right? If you're fishing a place where there's giants, that could be a, a double digit fish. If you're fishing a small little pond or, you know, uh, uh, maybe a river system or a creek, right? Where they don't really get very big. Maybe that's the one pounder instead of the half pounder or the three pounder instead of the one pounder, right? But the, the biggest fish is smart, right? And sometimes if you start too noisy or too loud or too big, you freak everybody out down there, right? It's kind of like, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you want to, you want to turn the music on, you know, and gradually increase it. Mm -hmm. right like you want to start with something kind of chill right like get a cool vibe and wake up and make sure you have your coffee before you start putting some rock on yeah if it just hits with you know megadeth right out of the gate at volume 10 you're just like you're super freaked out right like i might be into it but everybody else around me is gonna be like, turn that shit off right it's kind of the same way in fishing so if you're chill and you're sitting there and all of a sudden you know this loud thing comes you know you have a couple of things that could happen. Maybe that's exactly what you're looking for, but maybe that's freaking you out. By avoiding the sound and going to a more silent approach, you kind of eliminate the risk of spooking that fish right away. And we're talking about shallow water. We're generally talking about really having to maximize our casts and maximize the fish that are there because once they're gone, they rarely kind of reset, right? It's not like deeper water where they can kind of reset really fast or maybe there's a huge school of them. These are gonna be more like isolated fish, right? So, you know, a lot of times we can utilize a blade bait as a lipless replacement, as just being a quieter, more silent approach, right? So if you guys are fishing in areas where they're, they're smoking an LV500 or they're really chewing a lipless and kind of the words out and everybody's doing it. This could offer you a solution to be able to fish the same way as more of a, you know, vibrating bait coming through the water that's silent, that doesn't have all the commotion, that's still gonna allow you to rip it through grass or have that real tight, hard hitting movement. It, it's definitely been a huge player in places out here where the water's a little clear and the fish get spooked. So it could be a great option. now. We're gonna talk basically about three different blade baits today. These are the three that we incorporate into our arsenal the majority of the time, okay? These are probably the three best sellers anyway. So the OSP Override, okay, the Depths Circuit Vibe, and the Mega Bass Dyna Response. Now, every brand pretty much now has a blade bait. Spro's got one, Jackal's got like 17 different ones, right? Like, so everybody has a blade bait version. And, and go with the one that works best for you. I find that these three, day in and day out, tend to be the best ones. The circuit vibe is gonna have more of a like circuit board type body, so it's gonna have a different hit than say the override that's gonna be more solid metal, right? The Mega Bass one is going to be designed for more of a, a retrieve and less of like a lift and drop, if that makes sense, right? So. Let's just, let's start right there. So if you're looking for kind of a cast and wind replacement, the Dyna Response is a great way to go. Now the Dyna Response is gonna feature treble hooks on the bottom versus your traditional kind of dual hook system, right? And then it has a little, you know, kind of teaser on the back, right? Little tickler on the back side. Now, you can lift and drop this, you can do whatever you want, but where the Dyna Response really shines is on that straight retrieve. It hits super, super hard. So now the other thing that's cool about the Dyna Response is there's not a gazillion colors, but the colors are all pretty good, right? And there's a big trend that happens in the spring where 
red baits really start to crush. And you can get great red colors in a lot of these, right? Mega Bass makes one. OSP makes kind of like a spawn killer type color, right? So if color is critical even, you have options in blade baits just to give you the same color but a different sound. All right, so here's a look at the <clears throat> diner response out of the package. Now, it's a pretty traditional blade bait. It's got a thicker head section, right? So it's gonna kind of swim in kind of a nose down kind of tickler up. What's nice about diner response is there's, there's one rigging option, right? They pretty much identified exactly the best performance spot for this. So you just tie it on. You don't have to worry about, do I put it on the front hole? Do I put it in the back hole, right? It's already kind of preset for you. So think of this as a cast and wind bait that you can also fish on the bottom if you have to. I think of it very similar to this, right? It's cast and wind bait that you can put on the bottom and fish like a jig when you need to. So just as a great option for chilling out the vibe, right? We're going quieter, we're going stealthier. And again, you can go all the way down to a quarter ounce. So if you guys are fishing from the bank or really shallow, you can get small enough sizes to where you can keep it up higher. Now, just because you're shallow doesn't mean you can't put this on the bottom and stroke it on the bottom and do a yo-yo or a hop or a jig the same way you would in deeper water. Those fish are gonna react to that too. So if the fish are you know, shallow and they're not reacting to something that's just you know, a straight swim, go to more of a lift and drop retrieve and you can have a ton of success. Now, one of the nice things about going into something like an OSP override or uh, a depth circuit vibe is they will produce lighter sizes for the shallower water. So you could do a quarter ounce, you could do 3 16 ounce. Some of these go all the way even down to an eighth ounce. So you've even got like true kind of bait finesse weights here. You can utilize these for multi-species also, right? So we're talking about bass today, but there's, you know, there's no reason you couldn't incorporate these for trout or crappie or any any species that's gonna be feeding on some type of bait fish will crush these things. Now, I prefer the OSP or the depths when I'm fishing on the bottom, right? And there's a couple reasons for that. The biggest reason is they, they eat it really good. That's always gonna be the number one reason, right? But these also tend to snag less than the Mega Bass does on the bottom. And I think a lot of it has to do with hooks. Now, of course, you can change these hooks out. If you wanna take the trebles off the Mega Bass and put doubles on, or if you wanna take these doubles off and put triples on, you can. But, you know, blade bait, even though it's got exposed hooks, the way it's built and the way those doubles kind of sit, it's surprisingly snag resistant, right? Definitely not proof, right? You're gonna, you're gonna go through some blade baits, especially if you're fishing from shore. It's just the nature of the beast. You're gonna, you're gonna snag some in some rocks and lose some. But these lighter sizes give you the ability to throw and fish and kind of just lift and hop it through the rock. So all you're trying to do here is get this thing down in a rock and just come pop it out and let it fall back down, right? It's quick little twitches. And as this thing moves up, it's gonna vibrate really hard and then it's just gonna kind of fall straight back down. It's gonna vibrate really hard and tight and fall back down. It's just giving them a look that's natural-ish, but you're fishing it relatively fast to still draw a reaction out of them, right? So, you know, sometimes those fish move up and they're still cold, especially in pre-spawn, right? A lot of this is moon phase driven, is, you know, the universe driven and less water temp driven. I can't tell you how many times you know, I've, I've been at a lake and it's like, okay, water's 60 degrees, we're all the spawning fish, right? And they're not there because it's too early. Or I can't tell you how many times I've been at a lake and it's 55 degrees and they're spawning everywhere and they shouldn't even be up yet because it's the right time, right? So the universe in moon phase has a lot to do with a bass's calendar that's gonna draw them from the depths to the shallows. And a lot of times they move up and they're still just cold, right? Remember, they're cold-blooded fish. so. You know, whatever their body temp is, is what their metabolism is. So if it's cold and in the 40s or in the 50s, I mean, they're not gonna be moving very fast. And sometimes a bait that's just swimming past them either is too much or it never really deflects off something, right? And so it never really triggers that strike. Whereas something that's kind of right in their face and kind of bouncing up and down is just presented more right to the fish. Now. 
You can certainly slow down, drag a worm, drag a jig and fish really, really slow. But again, we've talked about this a lot and a lot of times when the fish are cold and moving slow, going slow is the wrong approach because it's so easy for a fish to just kind of move out of the way and let that slow thing move. Whereas when you're fishing you know, fast and if it hits them or comes close to them, they almost have to kind of take it in, right? Out of instinct, right? Or just like get out of my face or whatever the case may be. Doesn't matter as long as they're putting it in their mouth, right? So this just gives us a chance to fish quicker, to fish faster, but still fish relatively in a stealth way and fishing it and hopping it off the bottom. Now, there has been a very interesting trend coming out of Japan with blade baits. If any of you guys follow Evergreen, so Evergreen is, you know, notorious for having probably the most famous blade bait, the Little Max, right? So that's kind of the blade bait that everybody else has kind of taken as, okay, here's the Little Max. How do we make it better or different? Or, you know, if you're Berkeley, how do we just knock that off, right? So, you know, they are always kind of on the cusp of like leading things. And they created something a few months back that has really kind of caught fire over there. And I'm surprised I haven't seen much of this trickle back in. Maybe there's more of it than what I'm seeing, but we're seeing a lot of guys come in store using it. We're in, they're having success with it. So I'm gonna share that with you as well. And it's a great way to improve, especially shallow water blade bait fishing. Have you seen this talked about, Jeff? No. Okay. So uh, this might even have a name. I don't think it has a name, but basically what guys are doing is they are taking basically minnow type swim baits and attaching them to the hooks of their blade bait. Okay, so if you have a you know dual hook system like on this OSP, you're basically putting a swim bait on each hook. And what that's doing is as this is vibrating through, those swim baits are swimming too, and you're giving basically like a little cluster or a mini school of fish. Similar kind of concept to an A-Rig, right? Where a spinner bait, where it's got a bunch of blades, where you're just kind of mimicking this whole little pod, it's basically doing the same thing. So this blade bait is kicking, those baits are kicking, and it's just creating this whole little motion of a school of fish moving through. Now, what this does for a shallow water guy is if you are casting and winding, it helps just to give you a little more time, right? It slows it down just a touch because we're adding a little bit of buoyancy to the blade. So it's allowing us to keep it up a little higher. It's allowing us to slow the retrieve just a touch to help us pick through some of that shallow water. And it's allowing us to present something that looks completely ridiculous in our hands, but really amazing underwater. And again, just one more different look. Now, if you wanna play with this system, there are a few baits, there's all kinds of baits that you can use for this. So, you know, Evergreen is using their last ace, which is their kind of minnow bait that they, that they make over there. You know, that's the one that they're advertising. This is probably the most common one that I see, which is the three inch Hazardong Shad. So a lot of guys leave the paddle tail on. A lot of guys are cutting the paddle tail off too. So if you go with a paddle tail bait like this, if you leave it on, the swim bait is gonna kind of dictate the blade, right? Cause you have four paddle tails going, so it's gonna kind of control the motion. If you cut the paddle tails off and make them straight, the blade bait is gonna vibrate more and dictate the movement of the paddle tails. So you can mix and match the movements there as well. You can also you know, utilize the three different rigging holes there. So if you want it to be tighter or wider motion, you can change your snap to the different holes on the OSP or on the depths and give yourself different vibrations too. So lots of things that you can do to increase that. So, you know, the three inch Hazadong is a great one. The little Optimum, the Victory Tail, this is a great one as well. And again, because it doesn't have that paddle tail, it's a really good one to put on there and just let the blade dictate. But you know, you could cut down, you know, a, a Nico, like the Ikanago minnow. A lot of guys are cutting that down and making that short. You could get things like a OSP Mylar minnow or, you know, a 
uh, a flash jay, or there's all kinds of different like small little minnow type baits that you can do. No right or wrong, but it just gives you a different look that may increase some, you know, kind of hang time, I would say, of the blade bait in shallow water. Now let's talk about you know, the gear that you're gonna use. Obviously, if you're gonna drop down into something like an eighth ounce, you're gonna need to probably throw this on either spinning or some type of BFS gear. So this is going on something like my pop -X stick or if I'm gonna do spinning like a baby plugging, something like that, nice and light. But for me, even if I'm fishing shallow, I still like throwing the three eighths and the quarter ounce size. For me, I just, I prefer that because then I can get away with throwing a you know, full size bait casting rod that can handle heavier line because it's shallow and because I know that these are gonna get kind of snagged and wedged in some rocks. I like to increase my line up to, you know, 16 is kind of my sweet spot. Sometimes I'll even go to 18 and I know that seems a lot like, holy shit, 18 pound for a little quarter ounce bait. But remember, <clears throat> these are semi light wire hooks and if you're spending, you know, $9.99 or $12.99 or $14.99 for a blade bait, you don't want to be breaking too many of them off, right? So if you use a normal size rod with heavy enough line, 14 pound or 16 pound is probably perfect. Then if you do get it kind of wedged in a rock, you can give it a nice steady pull and at least straighten that hook out so you can get it back, fix it. Of course, you know, Ryugi makes great replacements for these. So if you guys need replacement hooks, you can always replace them out too if you get them dull. Something in a seven to one or eight to one, so remember you're gonna kind of just kind of fish it like a jig, right? So a higher speed. Basically, you're looking for something that's gonna have some power, but a relatively, you know, light tip. Uh, since the baits are gonna be light and the line's gonna be heavy, you're gonna need it to have a little give in the tip just to help it load to be able to cast. But it's gotta be fast enough to where the sensitivity maintains really high. All right, guys. That is a wrap. It, it, it's quick, right? It's something that may or may not be effective for you, but I think if you implement it and try some of these little tweaks, you know, the coolest thing about, you know, some of these things, like I know it seems kind of stupid, like you buy a bait and you throw a pack of swim baits on it, right? It's kind of ridiculous. But these are the kind of little tinkerings that maybe they, maybe they help you catch a few more fish, right? and that's gonna elevate your fun level, elevate your confidence level. It's something different, it's a good time. Even just throwing it and even just kind of, you know, swimming it through the tank, it's, it's goofy and it makes you smile and it's fun to do that sometimes. So, you know, try this stuff, right? Try it, see how it works for you guys in shallow water. I think you're gonna have a lot of success on it. I think you're gonna really enjoy adding the blade bait to your pre-spawn and early spring arsenal. Of course, if you have any questions, drop it down below. I would love to answer them for you. Jeff will leave links to what we talked about. And of course, on behalf of myself and everybody here, guys, thank you for the time uh, that you give us. Thank you for the business. And we will see you guys soon. Peace out.